And welcome to all of those listeners on the podcast or viewing this on YouTube. We are uh, in our next episode of Building a Culture of Collaboration. I'm Curtis Hewson. With me is Lorna Hewson. We are the co-founders and lead learners of Jigsaw Learning. And today we're really going to break down uh, considerations when we think about setting the physical environment for effective collaboration. We're going to share why that's critically important. Then we're going to bust into eight considerations to make and we're going to finish off with a little bonus around so what do you do if that physical space is not available. Thanks for joining and here we go. We all understand the positive impact and drive that comes from being a part of an effective team. When teams are less than effective, lack of productivity, frustration, and disengagement take over. Intentional and purposeful focus on building a culture of collaboration is the secret for leaders striving to make a difference. In building a culture of collaboration, Curtis and Lorna Hewson will share simple tips, ideas, and strategies to take your organization's collaborative efforts to the next level. So when we think about teams coming together for effective collaboration, we know that it's not just the structures and processes that we put in place, but actually the physical environment can mm. play a role too. So with us, our background being teachers, describe for those that are listening what we know as teachers about the importance of what <laughs> Reggio Emilia referred to as the third, the third teacher, teacher. <laughs> the physical environment and how it can either support or even negatively impact learning if it's not given clear consideration. Yeah, absolutely. So as a teacher in August, as you prepare, prepare for your new group of students, you spend a lot of time getting mm -hmm. your classroom ready. And that has a lot to do with the fact that it does have great impact on students coming in and and that environment can influence their learning. So one of the things I think about right away are the posters and the anchor charts that mm -hmm. we put up on the wall. Yeah, the visuals make... that go up to help support the um, engagement we're trying to have with our, yeah, our students. And making that learning visible for, for students as they come in. Another thing that teachers look at right away is seating. Yeah. So how do we make best use of the seating arrangements that we have in the classroom that really facilitates both visually, you know, that focal point mm -hmm. that you want in the classroom, but as well the that opportunity to work in groups and collaborate with one another. So when you think about the collaboration of students, obviously this isn't about how to set up your classroom yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we're going here, but but there is application for us that when we come together as as adults to engage and collaborate, we can take a lot of that same understanding and really think about how do we set the environment for effective collaboration through things like seating, visual anchors, all of those considerations that can have a really positive impact or if we're not paying mm -hmm. attention can actually negatively impact. So let's break down um, eight considerations that we want to put in place and let's start with what you talked about around seating what yeah. should we be thinking about in that space when adults are coming together around how they're positioned to engage yeah so i want to start out thinking that you know sometimes we don't uh, put enough thought into the seating arrangement or the space that we're coming together mm -hmm. to collaborate and so you choose you might be just be choosing any old space yeah well we <laughs> see it all the available. time of <laughs> let's meet in the break room let's yeah. meet in the staff room yeah. and sometimes it can lead to people over on a couch over on this side, a chair over here. Sometimes we might have someone with their back to another person. And what and what you ideally want to be able to consider is if you can at all possibly have people in a circle mm -hmm. and that every member of your team is in that circle, not with behind. eye contact <laughs> being able to made. But being able to create that, you know, everyone is a part. There's no uh, lead to the table. There's no, you know, no one who is sitting out behind, but really mm -hmm. having that arrangement where we can each see each other, but that everyone has value in that circle. Yeah, well, and I think we're going to come to this as well. I've also seen that half horseshoe or the horseshoe type sh shape where we do have a focal point that yeah, we're all absolutely. paying attention to that we'll come to in a little bit as well. So the positioning that we set up in the seating matters. Absolutely. And you know, we've sometimes seen when teams just are looking for a space and so they set up however they can. And people do end up sitting behind other people. 
that it really sets the tone that those people who are sitting outside of that circle yeah. can opt out. Yeah, and they they have less um, value than those that are right directly involved. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, well, let's go to our second idea, and it's this idea of norms. So in the show notes and in the description, we're going to link to a blog that talks about the value of norms. It's something that we've come to really hold dear of being able to clearly articulate what are the expectations that we're going to hold of one another when we're coming together to collaborate. So how can we um, have those norms accessible and available within our meeting space? Yeah, so just paying attention to the fact that, you know, we have them posted on the wall or yeah, we can poster. have uh, table displays. We can even include them on the top of the agenda to make sure that they are mm -hmm. visible and, and we can reference them easily. So um, it might be that you just have them as, as a paper on the table as well or mm -hmm. a tent card. Those all are great ways to make them visible. Well, and if you have that set meeting space, it's so easy to just, let's all turn our attention over to the poster mm -hmm. on the wall and walk through. And today we're going to focus on the second one. So having those norms right there are important. Okay, let's go to number three. And it's the idea of supporting artifacts, being able to use the wall space that we could have in that environment, almost like you mentioned before, the anchor charts for <laughs> students. What could be some of the anchor charts that we have available for our adults. Yeah, so there are all kinds of different things within, you know, creating that space of collaboration is you can have your kind of your template for your agenda mm -hmm. as yeah, the something on the wall. Yeah. Uh, your teams that you have created across your environment to be able to have a consistent schedule so you have that posted. Mm. We have seen that often yeah. where there will be the schedule of what teams meet and when. Mm -hmm. um, just to try and keep the alignment. We've also seen um, organizations that create team meeting overviews that really share out when do we meet and for what purpose. Yeah. Not every time we meet has the same purpose, so having that laid out as well. And depending on the areas of focus that you're working on, you might even want to have some um, resources in mm -hmm. terms of literature available. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and we know that we're not talking to just school leaders <laughs> in these conversations, but we have seen in our work in schools that oftentimes schools will put up their continuums of support so that we've got just visually mm -hmm. accessible strategies, ideas, supports that we could be putting in place for students. I think that could be valuable with any team of what are some key questions we could be um, keeping in mind? What are some key resources that we need to be mindful of that can be posted sure. up? All right, let's go to number four, and that is the physical tools that we could have available. So again, let's go back to our teacher yeah. <laughs> roots. You remember we have our, our little horseshoe table where students come around and we turn to the side and we've got things like uh, pens, whiteboards, uh, post-it notes, highlighters, <laughs> things that are all easily accessible to help support the learning. So what are some of the tools that we could have easily accessible for collaborative teams when they're coming together? Yeah, so um, the dollar store is our friend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can buy uh, cheap <laughs> bins that mm -hmm. are really great to be able to have all of that material accessible. And you might even have multiple bins ready so that you can share them across your team. And like Curtis said, it might have, you know, all of those tools as in, uh, highlighters and pens and post-it post notes. We always love post-its. Yeah, all the things that we just <laughs> want on hand if we need them. But you also might have resources available such as uh, question cards. And we use question cards readily in our collaboration to encourage people to participate well, in the conversation. What it's doing on. is it's a structure that helps normalize that we ask one another questions and, yeah. and it's just natural for how we we collaborate. I also think when we think about the roles that we establish, being able to have those either tent cards or table displays or even roll cards to just remind everyone that today I'm the timekeeper. And so I'm just going to keep reminding people when we have to move on to our next task. Having all yeah. that right on hand is super, super important. Okay, so then let's think about this next idea. And we alluded to it a little bit earlier, but having the ability to project notes 
Share with the people that are listening what you often see when we don't have our notes document <laughs> projected out for everyone as a visual anchor and either one person is taking notes over here on the side or everybody has their computer open to a shared document that we're adding notes into. Uh, what do we see? Yeah, so if everyone has their computers open or even their notebooks ready because they're writing down their own uh interpretation yeah. of those notes that's exactly what happens is that we often have you know 10 people in the room who are writing down their own notes and we don't end up having mm -hmm. that common understanding or a common agreement about how we're moving forward when we have that focal point then it's a place where everyone is looking everyone is uh, not maybe intentionally uh, responding to what has been documented, but that they are present and and watching what's being documented. Mm -hmm. Well, and it just helps focus us when there is that focal point that yeah. we could be seeing. And when we note, hey, can we add that to the notes? We all know what we're looking at. We also know that sometimes if we don't have those notes there, we may miss something if yeah. it's just on one person's um, device or if everyone has the document open, it's just so easy to lose some of that attentive listening mm -hmm. that we have where um, now we don't have a focal point and I may not be looking at you. I'm at my computer and we lose some of that intentional connection. Well, and another. then there's also the availability of. I'm just going to check my email. Yeah, just I just saw a Bing <laughs> come on just just yeah, one moment. Yeah, yeah. So, but but it is quite beautiful not having to worry about taking notes that mm -hmm. one person is taking, and I'm going to get copies of it afterwards, so I don't have to worry about yeah. that. I don't need my computer open, and I don't need my notes. And this is why the the roles within the meetings are so important for us mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so we're coming down to our last three. Next one is having our goals visually um, posted and accessible, whether those are overall organizational goals, our mission and vision, just to keep that as a reminder, or individual team goals. What does that look like when we've been working with um, different organizations? So we want to be able to keep those ever present because mm -hmm. that is the, the, the purpose of what we're doing as we come together in uh, in collaboration is that we are working towards our goals. And right. to be and able to have them posted, then that becomes that reminder consistently of coming back to those. Um, it allows us to make reference to them to mm -hmm. in a in a really easy way if it's represented in the room, either by posters or again on your agenda or on the table. Yeah, and I really like the idea if you can put it up on the wall as a focal point for us once again. And I think it helps remind us that when we collaborate, it's not the ends. It's no. the means to the end. We're collaborating together because we're trying to achieve these goals that we've established for ourselves for our organizational growth and success. And it's easy to lose focus of those goals mm -hmm. if you don't have a way to remind everyone about what it is that we are working toward. Absolutely. Okay, so second last thing, and to me this one is huge, is can we find a way to visualize our data mm. up within um, that room? And we've, uh, we've always aligned with the idea of a scoreboard. Yeah. And this first came from different businesses that would create scoreboards that yeah. would show what are our latest metrics, what is the growth that we're seeing, and being able to put that right up on the wall as a way to visualize what progress are we making, which then connects to those goals Back that we've to the goals to. again. That's right. Yeah. And just having simple, sometimes it can be really simple representation of the progress that we're making. And mm -hmm. so that can be, like you said, in a, a thermometer or, or even a number line yeah. a, across the room to be able to uh, simplify what you're working toward but so that you can see that progress being made. Well, and do you remember the one school that we had worked in where they had that number line yeah. put up from zero to a hundred and they could um, just with simple, simple um, identifications be able to say right now we are at 55% of our students achieving what we'd like yeah. and our goal that we're moving towards is this and then we'll be able to track 
over the next couple months where are they at now and again that visual representation is just so incredibly important we work with a lot of people who do data walls as mm -hmm. well and in their meeting room they um, post up uh, particular pieces of their data so that they can make reference to that um, easily too without having to you know open up a computer or to go right. to a, a binder full of yeah, data <laughs> a dashboard that's somewhere that we we haven't put up and again I don't think it means that we have to have every minute piece no. of data up but just what are some of the key metrics mm -hmm. that we're looking at all right so the eighth thing then and I think this one is critically important as well what are some ways that you've seen in uh, a a physical environment that is set up for effective collaboration for people to be writing notes taking ideas just jotting down things as they happen even documenting yeah. when we're in brainstorming sessions what do we want to see in a in a physical space to help support that I love this because it's <laughs> the whiteboard space yeah you want to be able to have a whiteboard available but even better and more fun is to be able to have uh, tables. Yeah, we've seen whiteboard tables yeah. established that people can just be jotting and sharing And those sharing whiteboard ideas. markers are available. And, and those are can, some of the artifacts yeah. and tools that we have just setting For on the sure. side. Well, yeah. we've also seen the whiteboard walls yeah. as well. But if those aren't accessible to us, even just simple flip charts. Yeah, absolutely. Or the big sticky paper that you can put up and, and just having something available for people to be able to jot down ideas if, if they need to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we do know that we have people listening and viewing right now who are going, well, that'd be really great if we could have a dedicated <laughs> space for collaboration within our organization. But yeah, we, we don't have that. We use whatever space we can to come together as teams. So as a little bonus, let's talk about what are some things that we've seen organizations do where they're meeting in different spaces and do not have access to some of this. How do they um, create some of the conditions that we've talked about knowing that when we meet, it's going to be in different places throughout throughout our building or even sometimes online where we don't have that physical space. What have yeah, you seen? Absolutely. So so the first thing that pops into my head is the uh, the cart. Yeah. <laughs> we have all of our resources available on a cart, and then that cart is transferable to wherever we need to Well, go. we've also seen it too with just carrying bins. Same yeah. kind of thing. All the resources and then being able to have table displays um, mm. within that tent cards that for identification of roles. We've seen um, organizations that have their norms on posters with magnets. So when we get in the room, we just pop it up onto the board, yeah. easily accessible. The idea us. is that you you want to make any space available for your collaboration, but but have that forethought to think about what do we need ahead of time and have that ready mm -hmm. to go so that you're not spending any of your very valuable time trying to find resources. Well, and I think too, just from what we shared right off the bat is when we're in those spaces, then taking just that five minutes beforehand and thinking about how should we physically lay out the table, the chairs, how do we configure this? Mm -hmm. Do we have our notes projected somewhere? How can we accomplish some of those things when we are have ready-made spaces yeah. or spaces that we're having to um, create ad hoc for our collaboration. All right, so we hope this has been valuable for those thinking about how we create space that has positive impact upon our collaborative efforts. In the show notes and the description, we'll also link to a blog that talks about this further uh, with some further ideas, samples, and examples mm -hmm. uh, of photos that we've been able to procure from different places that have established some of these physical spaces. And please reach out if you have any questions about this or other things around our collaborative efforts or as well. Or send us even better. <laughs> We'd love to see pictures of what this looks oh, like in your own sure. organization yeah. as well. Yeah. So with that, we wish you all the best as you continue to build that culture of collaboration within your organization. Take care, everyone. See you soon. For more on collaborative response, visit jigsawlearning.ca or join the JL Insider to receive access to newly added resources and content. Make sure to follow us on social media. Subscribe to the podcast and the Jigsaw Learning YouTube channel to access past and upcoming episodes. 
join us again as we continue to share tips, ideas, and strategies to help you continue to refine your culture of collaboration.